Right now is a great time to be buying a mid-range smartphone, with phones like the OnePlus Nord and Google Pixel 4a breaking cover recently. Both phones are similarly priced, both overall are excellent devices, but each represents a very different set of priorities, so it's going to take a deeper dive to figure out which one's right for you. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss more comparisons like this one, and we'll jump right in. On both the inside and the outside, there's a stark contrast between the OnePlus Nord and the Google Pixel 4a. There's no question the Nord has the more striking design of the two, especially its trademark blue marble hue. Meanwhile, Google opts for a more subdued matte plastic chassis that's comfortable but far from exciting. The Nord is considerably larger too, with a 6.44 inch display compared to the Pixel's mere 5.8 inches. That makes one-handed use a little trickier, though if you're used to modern large screen smartphones, it's really no big deal. The Pixel 4a, conversely, is definitely the winner for fans of small phones. It's no question, it's one of the most pocket-friendly Android phones I've used in a very long time. On the inside, the OnePlus Nord is clearly the technically superior phone. It features Qualcomm's upper mid-range chipset, the Snapdragon 765G, boasting more computational oomph in general, but especially in terms of graphics. The 765G also enables 5G for added future-proofing, which may not be a big concern right now, but will become more important in the future. If you want 5G in a Pixel, you'll need to wait a little longer and pay a little more to get the Pixel 4a 5G when it lands this fall. The single biggest performance advantage you'll actually notice in the Nord, however, comes from its display. The 6.44 inch panel packs a 90Hz refresh rate, which until recently has been exclusive to expensive flagship phones. The extra fluidity and responsiveness this brings is immense, and it's hard to go back to 60Hz once you've experienced it. It's the biggest thing that makes the Nord feel like a faster phone than the Pixel. One area where the 4a pulls ahead of the Nord though is in audio. Not only does it pack a pretty loud and clear stereo speaker setup, but the Google phone also retains the good old fashioned 3.5mm headphone jack. And while the Pixel 4a comes in a single variant with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, the OnePlus Nord can offer upgrades beyond its 8 plus 128 base configuration, up to 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. While 128 should be enough for most people, the option to double it, admittedly for a hefty price, is certainly nice to have. On paper, the Nord's battery capacity also beats the Pixel by a considerable margin, however, due to the larger display and higher refresh rate, the Nord's real-world lead is much shorter than you might expect. With my usage patterns, both phones got through a full day of around 15 to 16 hours, with the Pixel 4a clocking between 4 and 4.5 and hours of screen on time, and the Nord creeping closer to 5, so it's pretty close to being a tie in that respect. OnePlus does win on charging speeds though, thanks to its Warp Charge 30T spec, which promises 0 to 70% charging in 30 minutes. Google and OnePlus are both known for their slick, fast software, and on the surface right now the Nord and Pixel 4a share a very similar software aesthetic. Though that's about to change pretty soon, with the dramatic visual overhaul of Oxygen OS 11 later in 2020. Google's Pixel software is all about tight integration with the company's own services, particularly Google Assistant, which is at the heart of all the phone's intelligent capabilities. Pixel 4a boasts a new-looking, faster Google Assistant, and the Pixel software suite also includes on-device live transcription, which can intelligently turn spoken words in any app into captions. Plus, extras like the personal safety app and car crash detection could be genuinely life-saving in the right situation. There's actually quite a bit of Google to be found in the OnePlus Nord 2. The Nord is the first OnePlus phone to use Google's Dialer and Android Messages app for calls and text by default. That means you get access to Google's smart spam filtering options and caller ID features. Meanwhile, OnePlus has also recently integrated the Google feed into its home screen launcher, and all the company's 2020 handsets also come bundled with the live transcribe feature. Where OnePlus really sets itself apart is the speed and fluidity of its Oxygen OS software, as well as the many features inspired by its community. Zen Mode helps you disconnect with enforced smartphone downtime, and Oxygen OS is endlessly customizable, even more so than vanilla Android 10 on the Pixel. When it comes to software updates, Google leads the way with three full years of platform updates on Pixel phones, but OnePlus is no slouch here, with two years of platform updates and a third year of Android security patches. Still, OnePlus likely won't be able to match the sheer speed of updates to Google's Pixels. During their supported lifespans, Pixel phones are guaranteed updates to new versions of Android from day one. The greatest software strength for Google though might actually be the Pixel 4a's camera. On paper, it's identical to the camera of the flagship-priced Pixel 4, only with slower photo processing because of the weaker CPU. 
There's only one rear camera as opposed to the four of the OnePlus Nord, but considering the price and quality of that one camera, it is a worthy trade-off. The Nord's Sony IMX586 sensor is a proven performer, and combined with OnePlus's software processing and HDR features, produces pleasing shots with ample dynamic range and vibrant colours. The Pixel's main camera arguably produces more lifelike images, with less tendency to crush shadow detail, and Google's processing also produces shots with greater highlight detail and a trademark grain effect when you examine the photo up close. Both cameras offer dedicated night modes, however, only the Pixel can boast Google's astrophotography mode, which, with the help of a tripod or stand, allows extreme computational long exposures of the cosmos. That's something you still can't find anywhere else. Around the front, OnePlus offers two selfie cameras, one standard and another ultra-wide, for fitting in more stuff or people into your images. That's something Google doesn't offer, however the Pixel's front camera does benefit from Google's software portrait mode, as well as the excellent night sight mode. Before we continue, I want to talk about this video's sponsor, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a great way to keep your internet activity private and sidestep content restrictions, so your data isn't exposed to your ISP or whoever happens to be running that sketchy looking public Wi-Fi you might be connected to. With ExpressVPN, you get access to over 3,000 servers worldwide, making it easy to watch media or visit sites that might be blocked in your own country. For me, that means I can quickly virtually teleport to America and sidestep annoying video rights restrictions here in the UK. ExpressVPN keeps your IP address hidden without slowing down your connection, has no bandwidth limits, and 24-7 customer support. You can get it for Windows, Android, iOS, Mac, Linux, and even routers. You can get three months of ExpressVPN for free when you sign up for an annual plan, and they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Links are in the description, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. These are two really fantastic affordable phones, and it's hard to go wrong with either of them. If great photos are your main priority, then you've got to hand the win to Google. The 4A's camera is that good, and this kind of quality is really unprecedented at this price point. Same deal if you want a great small phone at this price. And the Pixel is also first in line for new Google features with its day one Android updates and regular Pixel feature drops, so if you're an Android nerd, that's a pretty big draw. However, OnePlus is unquestionably a step ahead in terms of sheer technology, so if you want more power for gaming, as well as the speed that only a fast refresh rate can deliver, then it's a clear win for the Nord. Likewise, spec fiends will appreciate the ability to bump up to 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, as well as real dual SIM support and 5G connectivity. Neither of these phones delivers everything you could want, so you've got to decide. Are you a power-hungry enthusiast who lives with big screens and fast refresh rates, or are you swayed by the promise of a superior pocket-sized camera that also doubles as an AI-equipped smartphone? Your priorities will dictate which one of these excellent mid-rangers is right for you. That's it for now, be sure to subscribe for more videos on future OnePlus and Google phones in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.